What's up guys? It's time for another RP. This video is longer. It's because I felt like I wanted to include a lot more detail, a lot more little nuggets of information that might help you guys if you're looking to get into resin, 3D printing, or just DIYing on your own. If you came from TikTok or Instagram, welcome. This is what longer form content looks like. You're going to see how much work actually goes into one of these art pieces. The art piece that is being made in this video is an alien UFO spaceship that is abducting a person. Okay, that, that's like, that's the Sparks Note version. Now, what it actually means is obviously deeper than that. All of my life, I I never would have thought that the holiday Christmas season could be a hard time for people. And I know that sounds selfish, but it was just, keep in mind, I was a kid. And as a kid, that's always an exciting time. You get toys, you get gifts, you get things you've waited for all year because you have no money. Only until the last few years have I realized, like, there's a lot of people, actually, that don't look forward to this season. It could be hard. Not only because you have to pool together money to buy gifts as part of this holiday, but the season could cause a little bit of depression or anxiety or just loneliness. I mean, Christmas is all about, like, being around family and friends and when you're somebody that may not have those things in your life it could actually highlight the loneliness that you actually may be hiding the rest of the year it's like amplified but the piece is meant to represent that sense of loneliness of sort of feeling like you're abducted this time of year versus the rest that's what this piece means and i genuinely hope you're not having a hard time this time of year but for those of you that are you're not alone with it and this art piece is meant to sort of speak to you guys that maybe you feel like you're sort of being abducted from your regular life this time of year but it'll pass just like everything passes you'll be fine this one's for you so i hope you guys enjoy this DIY. Check it out. So first up, I went on Tinkercad.com. If you guys haven't heard this, it is a website-based 3D design program. It's very basic and you can't really do super complex stuff, but I made this nice minimal UFO shape by crushing a circle and then expanding a cone to make the light beam. From there, I then turned it into a 3D file. All right, it's been the next day. The UFO is printed nicely. This is the beam of light. So what we're gonna do is once that's done, I'm gonna smooth that out. Yeah, that, that printed so nice. One thing I'm noticing, guys, is with UV resin, really dark resin smell and then clear resin smell, and then everything in between seems to be okay. Oh my god, I didn't lock this tray in. Look at that. That's not screwed in. That's not screwed in either. How did this not fail? Oh my god, that could have been so bad. Okay, how much time left? We got about four hours left on this piece before it's done, and then we can go on to the next step. All right, guys, I just got back from the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs game. They won against the New York Rangers. The piece is done. It looks so good. Look at that. Like, for a place where, like, the, the vat wasn't even in place, like, that is shocking. I've never done that before. It turned out great. I'm not gonna deal with that tonight. Uh, I'll do it tomorrow morning. Move on to the next step. Although, I usually like to do things at night, so things are processing while I'm sleeping. It's just beneficial to me. We'll do it tomorrow morning. I don't want to do too much. Plus I had a few beers. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> we'll do it tomorrow morning. The next morning I was finally ready to deal with this thing. Now, first we got to get this off of the build plate, which is always an enjoyable process. Honestly, that crunch never gets old. Like, it's equally as satisfying for me. <laughs> now, one thing you're gonna notice is the drainage holes. Like, there's one at the bottom of the light beam here. That's so the inside resin can get out as well. On the bottom of the UFO, I actually put a big drainage hole as well, but it also doubled as something that could sit on the light beam. Now, on the inside, there's some pretty massive supports that I'm gonna cut out later, but you kind of get the general idea of how it's gonna sit on here. Next, I soaked it in 99% isopropyl alcohol inside my ultrasonic cleaner. Now, this stuff is usually meant to clean jewelry. You can get it on Amazon for pretty cheap, and I find it just works amazing. You turn it on for four minutes, and it'll just like vibrate or, or put out ultrasonic waves and it'll just clean off all the surface from any uncured resin. After four minutes, I took the pieces out and made sure they were fully drained and then dried them off. Now it's time for a fun little hack. I mean, it's not really a hack if you're in the resin world, but I highly recommend getting yourself some silicone baking sheets. These were actually on sale for a dollar. And on one side it is grippy, but on the other side it is completely smooth. And that is where you're gonna do all of your resin work because resin does not stick to silicone. So it works perfectly. Next, I wanna show you guys this product called XTC 3D. It's a brush on coating for 3D printed parts. And yes, I just read that on the box. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. And I wanna show you guys how this works. When you do a 3D print, you have a lot of layer lines that are pretty visible. And instead of having to sand it every time, you could actually just coat it with this XTC 3D, which is like a resin that just cures in four hours. And it eliminates having to sand those lines away because essentially you're smoothing them over with resin. This is what comes inside of the kit. It is a two to one mix. It comes with a little mixing cup, a stir stick, a foam brush, and of course the two mixes. 
Now, before we actually coat these pieces in this XTC 3D, it's good to prep them as much as possible. So where the supports were, there's actually little bumps. I'm just gonna sand those away. So I sanded the bottom of the UFO, and next up I was gonna sand the light beam. However, this is YouTube, and you can imagine what this would look like if I start sanding this, and I don't wanna mess with the algorithm. <laughs> so just picture what I did. This is it fully sanded. Next, we're gonna put it on top of a cup that is a smaller circumference than the bottom. Okay, check this out. We are gonna pour 10 milliliters of part A, which is a smaller bottle. It's the more liquidy one. And then we're gonna pour 20 milliliters of part B, which is this more like toothpaste viscosity. I would suggest mixing it solid for about two minutes. And then you can go ahead and just paint it onto your piece. Now this stuff doesn't work for every piece. If you have something that has high detail and you put this stuff on top, you will lose a lot of that detail. Essentially what we're doing is we're filling in and smoothing any cracks or crevices by filling it in with resin. And unfortunately, if there's detail, it's gonna smooth that over as well. But it is perfect for this purpose. We're trying to make this piece as smooth as possible. With that same cup that I mixed, I have so much left over that I might as well do the UFO as well, just to put a top coat on it. You do not need a lot. Honestly, I made 30 milliliters, I did the entire light beam, and now I'm doing the UFO, which I didn't need to do. All right, so it's been about three hours since I applied that coat of XTC 3D. It's pretty much dry. It's still a little tacky, so I'm gonna leave it a little bit longer. The downside is yes, it smells terrible it's got this like awful fishy smell but as it cures that smell actually goes away which is good other than that this is pretty much the same as like a normal resin when you make a silicone mold of something so like for instance this piece right here the silicone is going to take on the finish of whatever you're molding so if it is like sort of like a matte finish like this bottle or a now glossy finish like this the silicone is going to copy that so when you pour the resin in it's going to either come out glossy like your mold or the mat, like your mold. So it is pretty glossy and shiny, which looks great. You can actually sand this stuff. And so what I think I might do is use a really high grit sandpaper, sand it so it's completely smooth, and then do one more top coat. It still has a little bit of curing to go. It's not fully there yet, but yeah, let's get to the next step. Four hours later, the pieces were fully cured with this top coat, and I decided to take the mirror finish and just do the little dome of where the alien would sit. I do wanna say I've done a review on this before, and it is like three times better if you put this on with an airbrush gun. As you can see, when you use a brush, you can sort of see the brush strokes and it does take away from the mirror finish. Now for some pieces, you might want to do two coats. Like this light beam, you could see it's pretty smooth, but as I rotate it, you'll see there's a little bit of blemishes here and there. So I'm going to re-sand it with just a high grit sandpaper and then we're going to do another coat on top. Just remember, every time you do a coat, you have to let it dry for another four hours. Four hours later, it's time to move on to the next step. So I cut off a little piece of foam core, I put our light beam on top, and then I cut a piece of poster tubing that is just about an inch taller than our piece on the inside, and this is gonna act as our mold walls. So for this step, I'm using a hot glue gun, and I'm actually filling in any of the cracks surrounding the light beam. This is both gonna fuse it to the foam core, but also prevent any silicone from getting underneath, lifting it up and making it float. I highly, highly recommend you use mold release. I'm using mold release 200. This stuff will stay attached to your silicone. If you don't apply mold release, it is the biggest pain to get this stuff off of the silicone. Next, we're going to pop that on top of our cone, making sure it's not touching any of the walls. And then we're going to hot glue that to the foam core. You're basically creating a seal so none of the silicone on the inside can seep out the bottom. Next, we're gonna mix up the silicone. Now I'm using a one-for-one one mix. It is super easy. Part A is white, and I'm doing about 300 milliliters of that. And we're gonna do another 300 milliliters of part B, which is blue. And when you mix this together, the way you know it's fully mixed is once all of the white has been incorporated into the blue. Now this stuff is called Mold Star 16 Fast. It cures in about 30 to 40 minutes. Now once that was curing, it was time to move on to the next step. We are gonna print out some minifigures to go inside of the light beam. And I want these to be black, so I'm gonna empty out the existing UV resin inside of my tray. Once it was fully dumped out and cleaned, I then added in black UV resin. I thought it'd be kind of fun to make me inside the light beam, just as a little Easter egg. What I did was I bought a 3D file of a guy praising, so it sort of like has his arms out, sort of looks like he's being abducted too. Cut off his head, and I had a 3D scan from previous that I ended up putting on top of the body and then tilted it upwards so it sort of looks like, oh, I'm being abducted, what is that, you know? Once the head was to scale, and then on the neck, I then smoothed out where the connecting was. I know it may not look pretty here, but it did work out. 
All right, hour and a half later, it's done. No way. It worked, they all worked. Look, it's like I'm flying. All right, we gotta clean this with some alcohol and we'll show all the detail. I will say the one part that I'm nervous about is the wrist. You can see it there, look how thin that is. I don't wanna snap that, but that's why I printed four. You guys, if ever you're doing like a detailed piece and it's relatively quick and you're not using the whole build plate, you might as well print you just in case something goes wrong. Yeah, because those hands are looking really fragile. While I'm at it, I just wanna show you how little resin that actually used to make four versions of me. That line was where I filled it up to, and it's used, literally it's almost still at the line. It's at like the middle of the A right now. So it used almost nothing. Okay, the hand came off nice. Yes, we did it. That's great. I'm curious to see how much detail there is once we clean this off. I genuinely thought that maybe we'd lose the wrist just because of how small it is. It is so thin that the black dye in the UV resin actually isn't you can sort of see it's a little bit see-through. Now, similar to the UFO, the process is the same. You clean it in isopropyl alcohol, will scrub away any uncured resin on the surface. This will also bring a lot of detail out as well. After the four minutes, I went ahead and dried it off. And you can just tell right here, look at all this detail on the shirt. You got the brim of the hat nice. And honestly, you can actually tell it's me if you've seen this scan before. Another great thing about smaller pieces is you can post cure it with just a handheld black light. At this point, our silicone mold was completed, and as you can see, it comes off nice, sort of like those cinnamon bun things. I don't know if you've ever had those, but it's a very similar effect. <laughs> and we popped it out, and we were left with this perfect mold. Next, I wanna show you how we're gonna submerge the guy in light beam. For this, I'm using easily my favorite product from Total Boat. It's called UV Cure, it's a clear resin. So I use this all the time. So what I did was I put a little bead of it on the stick just to create a little platform. And as you can see, it's already cured. I put the figure standing on top and then I use more of this Total Boat UV resin to lock in his feet. Just like that. Now to secure it in even more, I did one last bead of it. If you guys are interested, I'll have the link in the description down below where you can pick some up. But if you are working with resin or just crafts in general, Total Boat's UV Cure resin is hands down the most useful tool to have. I went ahead and bought some transparent resin dyes and then I got this Total Boat mixing cup, which is great because on the side of these cups, it actually has mixing ratio measurements. Now for this, I'm using Total Boat's thick set epoxy. The reason I'm doing this is because you can do deeper pours without burning the resin. And also you can see here how watery this viscosity is. That's gonna allow the bubbles to pop and not get trapped. Here's a great example. I'm mixing this and barely any air bubbles are forming on the inside. So it's time to pick our light beam color. So I just poured a little bit of resin into four separate cups and I need a light green, a darker green, a yellow, and then a lemon yellow. And then mix them up so I could sort of see what the colors would look like once it's mixed into the resin. I ended up going with the lemon yellow, which is the farthest to the left. It's a very vibrant yellow, and I thought that would be great for the light beam. So I poured that mix into our bigger batch just to save some resin, and then put in some more of this lemon yellow transparent dye. To ensure crystal clear resin, I popped it in the vacuum chamber, and you can see that the bubbles pop really, really quickly. It doesn't even make it to the top of the cup. Again, that's because of the viscosity of this stuff. Because it's not thick, the bubbles can float right to the top and pop themselves. So once that was fully degassed, I poured it into our silicone mold of the light beam. Now there will be some air bubbles from the pour, but you could pop those pretty quickly with the torch. And then I went ahead and submerged our figure inside of the resin. Now, because the Total Boat Thick Set Epoxy is more watery, it will take a little bit longer to cure, I find. Now, it will still take a bit of post-curing to make this fully final, but it's still pretty good so far. You'll notice that the feet are still a little bit exposed because it wasn't fully submerged, but that's not a problem because we are gonna mix up some UV resin with our dye, pour it on so the feet are fully submerged, and then using the black light, cure it. Now you're gonna notice some smoke. Yes, that is from the curing happening. The black light ignites a chemical reaction which heats up the resin, which then cures it almost instantly. So make sure you're doing this in a well-ventilated area, but this is the beauty of the UV cured resin. Once it was fully cured, and then sanded the piece down smooth, mix up a batch of resin and then poured it on the top as a top coat. Now when I do this, you're gonna notice it start to actually get clear, which is the great part about doing a top coat of resin. Oh, 
Okay, hold on. I gotta be honest with you guys. Okay, I sanded that piece like you just saw. I didn't go a high enough grit, so the, the scratches were far too big that the resin didn't actually fill them in. And when it cured, I was able to still see the scratches. Didn't like it. So what I didn't show in this, because I didn't record it, but I re-sanded the entire thing to a very, very high grit. So that was a whole day wasted. And then put another coat on top to make it all better. Just want to be honest. If you guys are going to sand something, do not stop at like 120. Just a little piece of honesty and a little honest mistake that I made that I want to teach you guys. Let's get back to the video. All right, now it's time to move on to the spaceship. This I just taped off the top dome where the alien would sit. And I used painter's tape just to make sure none of the paint gets on there. And then using a gloss black spray paint, I just painted the bottom, let it cure, let it fully dry for about two hours, and then did the top. And then removed the tape and had our UFO fully done. And just like that, our piece was completed. There's the light beam with the person and the UFO sits nicely on top. I could have made this a lot more detailed in Tinkercad. However, I wanted this to be minimal because if you add a lot of detail, I find art pieces turn into more of a cosplay thing. Some people's art tastes less likely to be displayed. One of the cool things is actually the guy on the inside was magnified because of the shape of the cone. You can see here what the actual size of him is. And the clear resin actually creates a magnification a bit to make him seem bigger. And there it is. That is the DIY video. You can see more of my PR package pile here. Ooh, I don't like that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this art piece. And if it spoke to you, please know that this time of year can be difficult and you're allowed for it to be difficult. You're going to be bombarded over the next few weeks with ads, commercials, radio, music, telling you that you're supposed to be happy and jolly and be with your friends and family and full of love. And if you're not, it's okay. The metaphor is, yeah, you know, sometimes when you're going through seasonal depression or one that's based around a holiday, it feels like you're not yourself, like you were abducted, which is what this piece was meant to be. Even if you're just somebody like UFOs or aliens, this is still a cool piece, which is what I like about it is that it's not like in your face, the metaphor. And at the same time, if the metaphor doesn't apply to you, you could always put your own in, which is why I love art. Uh, I made it for you guys out there that might be having a hard time. Just know it will pass. I promise it'll pass. You'll be okay. You've just been abducted. Thank you guys so much for watching. I have not abandoned this channel. I will still be creating content. So please subscribe to this channel. Give this video a thumbs up. It actually does help it with the algorithm. If you want more frequent content, you can follow me over on Instagram or TikTok has them as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. See you guys later.